So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and another update video just showing my inability to stick to one project and my ability to be distracted by shiny things. Uh, yeah. So on my turntable here at the moment is um, an officer. It's an Avon Post uh, officer actually uh, available from Mezzers Miniatures here in the UK. Beautiful model. Really enjoyed really enjoyable to paint up um, and if you don't recognize the uniform because um, I don't blame you it's actually from the Kingdom of Naples um, and long story short I've signed, seem to have got sidetracked into building a, a brigade of uh, Kingdom of Naples troops I, I know just go figure so there's two main reasons for this sidetrack project. I was supposed to be painting up some of my um, uh, Prussian, uh, Franco-Prussian Civil War, uh, Fran Franco-Prussian um, War uh, figures, but I got distracted. While I was hunting around for some bits and bobs, I found two bags of 24 each French infantry, which were left over from my Cleve Berg um, brigade uh, that I built. Um, when I was collecting them, I, I had some boxes, but also I bought some loose figures on, on eBay. And actually, the chap was selling ready constructed battalions, uh, but unpainted. So there were 24 figures in each, and multiple manufacturers. They were Warlords, Perrys, Vitrix, all mixed in together. Um, and I bought a couple of them, uh, and I used a couple, and I'd forgotten I had two more left, which I hadn't got around to using. And I found these in, in the box, and I thought, well, I. I really enjoy painting Napoleonics at the moment, and I'm going to keep going. Um, and as you know, I, I didn't feel I needed any more Cleve Berg, and as you know, I don't really like um, painting French, or indeed playing French. Um, I thought, and then I remembered this book. You can read that. I've mentioned this before on the channel. Uh, and on the podcast, the Monday uh, Plastic Crack podcast, Napoleon's Campaigns in Miniature by Bruce Quarry. Um, now, in my early formative days of wargaming, um, I used to play with plastic soldiers, airfix uh, plastic figures, um, and I can't remember, but a school buddy and I picked up a copy of the very first um, airfix edition of this book it was an fx book and then they updated which had a very basic set of rules in it um which was based on national characteristics you go so all the troop types had different troop uh, factors fire factor impact confusion morale blah, 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 blah. even down to speed uh, movement speeds were all different according to different nationalities and even different troop types and we loved playing these rules and we really enjoyed it and um, then Bruce Gorey brought out this, this book, Napoleon's Campaigns in Miniatures, which has all sorts of details of um, uh, various campaigns. And, and I loved reading them. Look at that. That's the Battle of Ailu. Ailu? Ailu? I never, have to, never know how to spell it, how to pronounce it. Um, you know, really in Friedland. There you go. Lovely pictures. And anyway, this book I loved. It was one of my go-to books. I when I uh, I had it as a library book, bizarrely, in the back in the days when libraries were a thing. Uh, and then when I saw it in a second-hand bookshop some time ago, and I had to pick it up just for old time's sakes. And I'd love to get hold of the uh, the Napoleonic, uh, sorry, the um, Airfix version of this, which was to say the first one I did. Any anywho, um, I remembered. When I was looking at these bags of French figures and thinking, what shall I make out of them? I remembered uh, this book and a section in it about the Kingdom of Naples. And I thought, it just shows my perverse way of thinking that I thought, you know what, I'm going to build a, I'm going to build a Neapolitan army. <laughs> well, brigade anyway, for black powder and sharp practice. And so I want them to be usable for both. Um, so let me just find the page in here, which, which is the bit that's stuck in my memory um, and made me think this way through. So just bear with. Ah, here we go. So this is what Bruce says in this book. Alongside Spanish troops, Napole um, 
Neapolitans ranked as the worst in Europe despite their colourful chocolate box uniforms. <laughs> ah, the worst in Europe despite their chocolate box uniforms. I mean, why would you not want to do that as a unit, right? <laughs> as I dug further into this, um, this army um, and details about it, it just hooked me in properly. So that's what I've done. I built a brigade that can be used both for sharp practice and also for um, black powder if I wish it to. Uh, quick history lesson on um, Naples, Kingdom of Naples. Back in the uh, Napoleonic era, um, Italy wasn't one country. You had the Kingdom of Italy, you had the uh, Papal States, and you had the Kingdom of Naples, which was basically the southern half, the boot down into Sicily. And if you saw my video about uh, the Normans in Sicily, you'll know that they basically formed this kingdom, which actually then existed all the way through to the Napoleonic era uh, as the Kingdom of Naples. Um, it was the actual Kingdom of Naples in the Napoleonic era, era was set up by Napoleon in 1805, basically for something for his brother, elder brother Joseph to do. Um, but it later went to Murat, the famous cavalry commander. Um, when Joseph was made king of Spain, Murat got kingdom, became king of Naples. And the Neapolitan troops did actually see quite a bit of action. They fought in Spain um, alongside Eugene's uh, army of Italy. And a division went into, uh, it was involved in the 1812 Russian campaign, although didn't actually see any action uh, in the actual invasion. It was largely um, stationed around Danzig as a sort of special a reserve holding the supply lines open, which judging by the quality of the Nepalistan troops was probably the best thing it could be done. But it did actually see some action in the, in the retreats later on, um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, in, in 1813, Murat deserted Napoleon and technically joined the Allies, but he was careful to keep his troops out of action. So there's an opportunity there for a sort of you know, maybe fight on the Allied side with these Neapolitans. He, he rejoined Napoleon's cause in 1815, but was defeated by the Austrians and missed Waterloo. He was later executed for treason. Um, like the Italian army, the Neapolitan army was organised along French, line, uh, French lines comprising one, uh, one regiment of guard grenadiers, two regiments of, guard, of Villete grenadiers, uh, some guard marines, six, three battalion led regiments of line and two of light infantry plus associated cavalry, etc. Enough of the books, let's have a look at the figures. So this is going to be my brigadier who will lead the army. And I'm, as I said before, he's an Avon Post figure. Really, really, really pleased with him. I bought it. I don't really know I bought it. I think I, I placed an order with, with um, Carl at Messrs Minis for some other stuff. And I just saw it and I thought, you know what? You can't have enough nice officers. And I'm really pleased I did because he's a really quality figure. Um, so that's him. So the first actual regiment... Um, well, battalion, I guess, that I painted up was this one. Um, this is, uh, so this was one of these bags of assorted miniatures um, that I had left over from the Cleveberg. And a bit like the Cleave, actually, I did it as uh, white. They, they have a white, basically a white uniform, most of the line infantry in the Neapolitan army. But multitude of different uh, facing colours. This is supposed to be the 3rd Regiment, I think, which had um, a sort of red scarlet facing, which is what I've done with them. You can see the Grenadiers at the back here with their bearskins. They did actually retain their bearskins, but the French did, and the Voltigers here. Um, the, I'm, I've got some different flags coming. When I decided to, um, to upscale this, I decided to buy some uh, GMB flags. So this is an old paper one that I managed to download. Um, I'm going to replace it with a proper flag when it arrives. Um, and you'll see the other battalions haven't got the flags yet, but that's fine. Um, when they arrive, they arrive. So as I say, this is the third battalion. Really pretty looking unit. Uh, chocolate box, remember? Chocolate box. Um, and I just thought, awesome, I'm going to do that. So I've painted them on, I've done them on single bases so that I can use them for sharp practice, but also for um, uh, 
black powder when I choose to, um, and that will give me lots of flexibility. Great fun to paint. Uh, just used my standard method now with the whites, uh, using these um, Scale 75 war front. Uh, this is sort of creamy, it's called creme vice. Uh, it's the base color on the, on a, on a light gray primer, um, and then touched up, highlighted with this one, which is proper white. Um, Oh, by holding them too high. Yeah, there you go. Proper white, um, and with a heavy wash, and then touched up again with the with the white over the top. And I just think it gives it that lovely colour, uh, which which makes it really simple to paint as well. Which is lucky because pretty much all of this formation has white uniforms as a basis. So that's the third line. What next? So this was the second bag I found uh, that I had left over. Um, and this one is a real mixed bag of different figures. Um, I think quite a few of them are Vitrix ones, and they're in a much more sort of dynamic poses. So I thought, right, I'll turn these into um, a light infantry battalion, um, which I can again use for sharp practice as voltages or whatever. Um, and then they can form a light battalion for the brigade that I'm building for sharp, uh, for black powder. Um, Unfortunately, the, uh, the colourfulness of the uh, Neapolitans didn't continue to their light infantry, so it seems. Uh, they had pretty much the standard French blue trousers, blue jacket and white um, uh, cross belts. Um, that's pretty much it. There's no real colour to them. So, But I thought they'll be very flexible, very useful. So I've done them up. So there's a battalion of that. So, so we've got one line, one uh, light infantry so far. There's also... Uh, an extra officer there, which for sharp practice would be really useful um, for the future. So I've got a couple of extra single officers for this formation, as I say, just to allow me to play sharp practice with it where you need a few big men. So that's the light infantry support. So we need some artillery, don't you, in every brigade? So this is, um, I think this is a Warlord Metal um, French late period gun. Sorry, it's wobbling around rather a lot. Um, which I've just painted up uh, with the Neapolitan uh, uniform colours, which actually were slightly more interesting to do. So they are, um, you can see here on this fella, um, they're blue uniforms, but then they have a red front, uh, turn backs all the way through, um, which kind of just, again, gives it that little bit of difference. I think this is probably quite a large gun. Um, I can't remember whether it said on it um, what, what scale gun this one on, but it looks like a 12 pounder almost. Um, but I've done it in the French colors. So the French sort of had a green uh, paintwork on their guns. So I've copied that because actually, as I understand it, <laughs> you know, get down a rabbit hole, right? Um, well, I certainly do. So as I read up about the Neapolitans, it was fascinating. They they didn't have very many guns uh, when um, initially when um, when Napoleon set up the kingdom of uh, Naples and gave it to his brother. Um, they 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 were very very limited on their artillery. But by the 1812, they actually had quite a few batteries. So clearly, the French influence had, had worn off on them. Um, don't know how effective they were, but whatever. And, um, there is a, uh, a spare chest at the front that I stuck on again, one of the sort of bits of spare scenery I had and a, a backpack that I've um, stuck, propped up against it, just to give it a little bit of nuance. The figures are individually based. Um, I need to buy another. In fact, I've ordered a single figure um, from um, Front Rank, which I'll paint up to make the fifth Gun crew members, because in sharp practice, I mentioned this before, sharp practice, the gun crews are, th are five. Um, most of the, the Warlord packs come as fours, which is a little bit annoying. So you have to buy an extra figure just to, to allow you to play. I mean, you don't have to. I could just use a standard infantry man in there or just put a marker. But I want to have the proper five. So I had another order in with front rank. So um, I added a, an extra gun man to it. So, yeah, that's that gun. Artillery support. Done. So we've got uh, one regiment of infantry, line infantry, one, uh, sorry, one battalion of line infantry, one battalion of light infantry, um, and a gun, an officer, and a dismounted uh, officer so far. And then next up. So next up is the 7th Regiment of Line in the Neapolitan Army. Um, this was, as far as I can tell, a unique regiment. Um, of all the combatants in the uh, Napoleonic Wars, 
Um, sorry, the guy's not, he's not standing straight. Um, it was a black unit. Um, and as far as I can determine, everything I've looked up, the, it was the only um, black unit to see action um, in Europe during the Napoleonic Wars. I mean, there were several um, black people involved in uh, various companies and uh, in various regiments in, in a number of different armies, also a number on board ships, um, and of course out in the colonies, uh, a lot of uh, black troops were engaged by uh, the British particularly. Um, but this, this particular regiment was originally recruited uh, from the West Indies um, by the French, and was part of the French army, um, where it sort of had the un unlucky uh, reputation to be the worst regiment in the French army. Um, when Murat took charge of the uh, Kingdom of Naples, it was transferred to the Kingdom of Naples, uh, this whole regiment, um, where it instantly became the best regiment in the Neapolitan army. <laughs> That says everything you need to know about the Neapolitan army. Um, <laughs> chocolate buck soldiers, worst in Europe. There you go. Um, now initially, it was entirely uh, made up of black uh, soldiers, black recruits. Um, it did have white officers, which was not uncommon uh, through actually even later colonial periods uh, that happened. But uh, from what I read, as this unit um, continued through its service record, um, it more and more of the officers became black as well, uh, to the point where it was pretty much uh, entirely black. Uh, and then, of course, it went through a continuing process where the casualties weren't being replaced with black troops, and then it continued to go white, started to go white again. Um, such is the way. Um, it was originally. Um, so it was part of the uh, Neapolitan army. It was part of the the uh, Neapolitan troops that um, was deployed um, in 1812 uh, to support the French attack into Russia. Although it never actually went into Russia itself, it was part of uh, the 33rd Neapolitan Division, um, which remained largely behind defending supply lines in Danzig and others. Um, and so it never actually went into Russia as a whole, but it did form part of the sort of defences as um, as the retreating French poured back across the border trying to help out and um, was part of the sort of defensive troops that tried to block uh, the Russians. Um, and apparently it actually acquitted itself pretty well. So there's a part of a... A fairly successful rearguard action as the uh, French troops streamed what was left of them streamed back across Germany um, towards France. Um, then didn't really have any much involvement. Uh, the a number of the Neapolitan troops were involved in Leipzig, uh, but this this particular battalion wasn't, um, and I don't think it actually saw action again until uh, much later in the war when Murat tried to flex his muscles um, against the Austrians and was soundly defeated. But I think it's just symptomatic of just something a bit different, which is why I wanted to do this battalion. Um, as I say, just unique. No other black troops, no other black units in, um, in Europe during the Napoleonic time. Um, so just seemed a bit of fun to do this one. So um, there you go. Uh, they were obviously yellow facing, uh, yellow turnbacks uh, on their white uniforms, which again just adds a bit of variety. So we've got the red, we've got pink, we've got uh, yellow, um, all sorts of other colours involved in the Neapolitan army. Uh, it's just shockingly bad. So the final infantry battalion um, that I managed to build out of all these extra troops was this one. Um, this one is just, I just want to sing just one cornet, but I won't put you through that. If anyone remembers, anyone's old enough like me remembers the adverts on the TV. This this regiment just sort of typifies Neapolitan 
to me. Um, pink and white. Um, this is the 8th uh, Regiment of Foot in the Neapolitan Army. Um, now, I did a lot of reading up on what the colours were and a lot of um, older images of all the regiments, to be honest, in all armies, the colours vary considerably. Um, so this regiment, I saw it as this sort of pinky colour through to a sort of um, quite vivid red um, and, and all shades in between. And I just chose to, to take the pink option because I just thought it's just perfect for the, the idea of these being chocolate box troops. Um, Again, this is left, uh, well, this is the other half, so, well, not other half, the Perry box of infantry comes with, I think, is it 42 infantry in it? Um, so, this was what's left of the box of the 42 um, that I'd used the other half on for that 7th regiment, if you see what I mean, and then I bought two extra sprues. Um, of figures just to make up the extra eight men so this made this battalion of 24 um, so that's how I did it so there's a mixed bag they're, they're mainly Perry's but there's um, a, a few Victrix in uh, sorry a few Warlords in here um, but they mix in pretty darn well uh, I can't even see where they are to be honest I think that one's a Warlord one I can't see the rest uh, the sort of um, I, I use the Sapper figure because I just love that figure. Again, around 1812, 1813, some question marks whether the um, Neapolitans, like the French actually, were still wearing uh, bearskins but for their elite companies, but whatever. This guy I just sort of made up out of parts. He should really be a standard bearer, but in the Neapolitan army, um, only one standard. Uh, and you'll notice I haven't actually got the flag yet. It's coming from GMB. Hopefully, very, very shortly, and I can stick it on and show you what the whole army looks together. Looks like together, uh, what whole brigade looks like together with their flags on. So that is the eighth, just one Cornetto unit of uh, infantry from the uh, Kingdom of Naples army completed. I'm quite pleased with how it's come out. These are definitely, definitely going to have that uh, uh, chocolate box look. Uh, by the time this whole battalion, whole brigade is finished. So next up, and probably largely finally for the infantry component of this impromptu brigade of Neapolitans, um, I had six uh, skirmish troops left over from the Perry box. Um, so I've made them up as the light company from the 7th the the black unit black unit um i was tempted to do the eighth because of their um, ice cream colors and what have you but in the end i decided to do the seventh just because it's so unusual to have a black unit so um these will be useful for sharp practice um and i guess i could also use them as a skirmish screen in um black powder um obviously i've also got that light uh, battalion uh, which I could also use as a skirmish group for, for either game as well so um, I should be well covered but since the Perry box gives you these extra six uh, in skirmish type poses I thought I'd go for it so there you go that is pretty much I have got one cunning plan to come but it won't be for a while yet um, with this uh, brigade but um, I think that's probably enough for the sort of impromptu, just got distracted kind of unit. Anyway, so finally I felt that um, my poor old Neapolitans were going to be up against it enough that um, they needed some cavalry support. Um, so I've done this regiment of, um, well, this is supposed to be the first Neapolitan um, chasseurs à chasseur, cheval. Um they have um, red trousers and green jackets, basically. Uh, the elite company, these two up the front here. Um, officer here, put him in the Shaco, just, uh, sorry, the Busby, just because I thought it looked cool. Uh, Trumpeter, as was common in the earlier period, certainly to have reverse colors. So he's got um, green trousers and a red jacket, just for a change. Um, these are Perry plastics. Come out a little bit shiny again, but I think it's partly the light, but it's partly the varnish. I don't know why. Every so often it just gives it really <laughs> quite a shiny finish. But anyway, whatever. But these all um, 
uh, most of the brigades in black powder cavalry and infantry are separate but you know I'm going to adapt my brigade so I'm going to have the four regiments or four battalions of uh, infantry one of the which is the lights uh, the gun and this light cavalry formation just to provide a bit of extra support because they're pretty crap um, <laughs> Uh, as I mentioned before, I've got a cunning plan for a, another unit which um, will be there to annoy all you French e-files who love the French so much. Um, but I'll more about that in the future. But um, as it is now, that is this brigade of Neapolitans finished. So largely based around leftover figures that I had from the Cleveburg. So um, waste not, want not, and all that. And as it is, I get a slightly weird alternative kind of uh, brigade to to field if i'm feeling very very brave indeed because as i keep saying they're not very good <laughs> the stats on um, in black powder um in the 1812 book oh, the apolitans they are not good at all anyway let's see what the brigade looks like laid out for battle and there's my leftover neapolitan brigade laid out I mean, considering all these figures, well, apart from the gun, came from figures that were in the stash. Oh, and a sprue of infantry, yeah. The, oh, two sprues of infantry I bought to make up the extra battalion. Um, out of leftovers from my Cleveberg project and a box of French figures that somehow had found their way into my stash, um, I managed to build this brigade. And I'm really pleased with it. So, um, yeah, I showed them all individually. But we've got the... Uh, uh, third battalion of line there, backed up by the eighth. We're in their um, one cornetto, oops, sorry, one cornetto pink um, uniforms. We've got the first uh, light regiment of cavalry there. Shouldn't really be in a brigade of infantry in this period, not for the Napoleonic type side, but yeah, whatever. Uh, we've got the uh, the gun here. Got an extra crew member. I bought him from front line, and I'll paint him up at some point. We got the battalion, third bata uh, sorry, first battalion of light infantry. Very unfortunate bunch of troops that went out to peninsula into garrison duty and were virtually wiped out immediately. They got there uh, <laughs> by the guerrillas. Um, and then the uh, the seventh at the back here, the black unit. Um, so, yeah, so there we go. Oh, hang on, we've got the infantry officer down here, which I've done as a light infantry, because if I do play sharp practice with them, it's useful to have an extra big man. Um, there's the, um, the black light company. Well, the 7th Battalion uh, light skirmishing troops. Just again, for black powder, those were the six left over that you get in the uh, Perry box set. When you're doing the battalions, and there's the avant-post commander leading the army or leading the brigade. Oh, it's not bad. Quite pleased with how this has come out. It's been a good project. It's a shame the uh, the troops are so terrible. I was looking through my copy of um, Clash of Eagles for Black Powder, which is the the only book at the moment that has uh, this army in it. Um, let me just read you some of the stats. Yeah, so, I mean, the hand-to-hand -hand factors are only five for a standard battalion. Um, and their shooting is only two for a standard battalion, where most people are... Oops, this is falling over. Uh, where, some, where most battalions are um, six and three. These have a less one less dice. Also, the l regular line are unreliable and wavering. And the and Neapolitan Light Infantry... Uh, unreliable, wavering, and poor skirmishers. <laughs> uh, why did I do this? Uh, they don't have stats for regular cavalry, but if I make them Neapolitan guard guard light cavalry, uh, they have a hand to hand of five, um, and an un uh, unreliable and also wavering. So not altogether good. Even the artillery, well, again, they don't have stats for foot artillery, they don't have stats for horse artillery, uh, but they are unreliable and wavering. So basically this is an unreliable and wavering army built out of odds and sods. So it's going to perform absolutely magnificently on the tabletop, obviously, isn't it? 
I mean, the trade-off is that you you can get a lot of these fellas, and I um, a b battalion of them as they stand, a regular battalion, unwavering, uh, unreliable, and wavering are um, only twenty points. <laughs> so actually, I think I might add to this because if I ever did want to field it, I'd want to field the brigade. It's quite a big one because twenty points. Basically, a French uh, regular battalion in uh, 1812 um, costs in black powder costs around double that, about 38 points. So one of these, I get two of these for one Frenchie. I've already got a plan. Don't worry, I've always got a plan. Anyway, thought well, it was fun to see them laid out together. Um, hopefully now with the with the lockdown rules changing here, hopefully we'll be getting out and getting a game soon. Won't be long before we can actually go indoors and have a game. Fantastic. Anyway, hope you're staying well. Hope you're doing well. Sorry about the road noise. I'm filming this quite early in the morning. Um, so I'm about because I'm going away for a few days and I wanted to get this video uploaded. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like. And even if you didn't, hit dislike but please just explain why um it'd be it's really difficult to know when you get a dislike whether it what what the reason is um maybe they just hate me but maybe it's because you didn't like the subject but it'd just be helpful to know um hit that subscribe button hit that notification button so you see when i put stuff up um and if you're feeling if you're feeling particularly generous um there's um, a patreon page linked to the to the channel which helps me out um when i'm trying to do stuff for the future and also a link to some um, uh, merchandise like uh, t-shirts and so forth that uh, you might be interested in. So thanks for watching once again. Stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you again soon. This is Dom signing out. Mm -hmm.